Discipleship. Amen? Amen. 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 So some I need some input. You guys help me out tonight. What what, what was our first first part? Anybody remember the first part? Yeah. Okay, so we called it discipleship, right? Yeah. Being necessary to sight. Being what? Necessary. Being necessary. In Christ. Before we go any further, what does that mean to anyone since we've been going over the last couple of weeks? What does that mean now? What, what have you learned? What, what would you share tonight if you just were able to share this with somebody new? What would you tell them? Would you say you looked at discipleship a new way now? Yeah. yeah. Each of us has a role to play mm. in spreading the gospel. Amen, brother. Amen. We all have a role to play. Amen. We're essential. Essential. Amen. We talked about during COVID. They call certain groups of people essential, essential workers. workers, right? Yeah. Exactly. But you know, when we're talking about the body of Christ, we all are essential workers. Yes, are we not? Yes. For what good is a man or woman or boy or girl to know the love of the Lord and not want to? with somebody else. Amen? Amen. Amen. So our first part was what? Part one. What was part one? The belief in the gospel. The belief in the gospel. Right? Yeah. And what were our three points from that, if anybody can tell us? The belief in the gospel. What were they? Be ready. We must be removed. And we must be redeemed. Amen. Amen. And there was a question I had at the bottom, right? Yes. What was the question I had? Um, the question was, are you a disciple of Christ? And if so, what is your reason why? Okay. Did you do it? You didn't do it, huh? You did your homework. I'm, I'm so sorry. It's okay. It's just, you know. I wouldn't love to. I only put this on the paper for you to, you know. I know. You're right. To see what you think is worthy of it. Did you get it? Get it? Did you get your hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna say you took care of your brother. Lord, help me. Like that. Look, we got it. We got it. We got it. I took care of it. Okay. All right. I think we saw. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, who? So, if you could, could you answer that question tonight? Oh, yes. So, the question. Read the question for me. Okay, you know what so you are you a disciple of Christ? Uh -huh. If so, give your reasons why. And okay. I say yes, I am because I love to share what He's done for me. Ooh, and I want people to know he's real and he's here for you. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Anyone else? Anybody else do the question? If you could answer the question, <laughs> how would you answer it? If somebody said, well, D, why, 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 are you, why are you a Christian? What would you say to them? I'm a believer. Okay. Okay. I accept this man. Mm-hmm. My Lord and Savior. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And a uh, discipleship, a person who follows the teacher in order to learn from and become like that teacher. Okay. Follow. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves. Mm. And take up your cross. Take up their cross yeah. and follow me. And follow me. Yeah. Amen. Yes. Um, if somebody asked me that question, why am I a believer? Right. Because not only do I believe, it's because I've had an experience. Experience. Okay. okay. I've had an experience where I know that there was nobody but the Lord. Okay. Okay. So we can all, we can all kind of say that God has reached us in some place, somehow, somewhere. Amen? Amen. 
And I want to remind you, but I can't say this enough, the critical part of what Dean Corbett just said was teaching. Teaching. Yeah. Teaching. I repeat, you cannot get it all on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. You got to get to a Bible study at a Sunday school such as this so that you can raise your hand and say, hold up, man, I hear you talking. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. Amen? This is an atmosphere that people don't just hear from me, but we all hear from who? Yeah. Yeah. One another. Because we all got life experiences, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Some of us have had some good days. Yeah. Some, some, yeah. Some, yeah. some hills to climb, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just thought it was me, but I, I, I feel that yeah. way. So what was part two? The bearing of our gifts. The bearing of our gifts. Right? Yeah. And what were the points from that? Acknowledge our gifts. Acknowledge our gifts. Um, Try to read your own hand, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, our gifts. What was that? Is that advising? Advising of our gifts? Yeah. And anointing of our gifts. The anointing gifts. of our gifts. Go ahead, Mother. Mm -hmm. Using of our gifts. Amen. Mm -hmm. And why is it important to use the gifts of discipleship? We all have that gift. We just haven't been using it. Can we be transparent today? Yeah. <laughs> when, all, when we all decided we would accept the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of our sins, and said we will receive them as our Lord and our Savior. We became disciples. Therefore, we all were given the gift to share with somebody else. Amen. Amen? Amen. I'd like to think that I can reach anybody out there. But I'm smart enough to know I may not. Yeah. That don't mean I ain't going to tell them though, right? Yeah. But most of my telling is not my talking. Mm. Right. Show it, show it. My life match my lips. Amen. What I always say, people hear you, and they may not listen to you, but they always watch you. Always watch. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Isn't it a thing about when somebody, they, 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 they get the wind that you you disbelieve a person, why are they always focusing on us? Why? Why do you believe? Why do people, why do why they sit there and watch your cubicle and see what you're doing over there anyway? Waiting on you to say the good cuss word. They say, see ya! <laughs> she ain't say. That's what they do. Like we mistake three, right? Right. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. They, no one said we're they, they knew you before you came over. Ah. Yeah. So they want to keep you on the same path. Ah. Okay. So why is it important for us to understand that even though in life, we may make mistakes, mm -hmm. that does not change the miracle that came into our lives. Right? right yeah. And the miracle was accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and understanding that we are necessary. Guys, I cannot say this enough. Until you begin to grasp unto this word necessary, needed, essential. You're just a warm person holding a cold seat. Mm -hmm. but when you begin to realize you're necessary, and somebody over there who watches somebody over there, they shouldn't be, but they are. Somebody in the back watching somebody in the front, somebody to their left, somebody to their right. And they see the praise come from your voice. They see the, the tears coming down your eyes. They see the connection you're trying to have with God. And they believe, oh my God, he's really dealing with this person. And I want him to deal with me. Amen? Amen. I tell people on my job, when I show up, I believe when people call 911, they call it for the police. But I also believe in the spirit world, they're asking God yeah. to answer their prayers. And so I tell my fellow deputies, when you show up, people see first the police officer, the natural, but in the spirit world, they see the angel of the Lord right. coming to bring peace out of confusion. All right. Now, mm. the problem is, you can't be part of the confusion. You got to be part of the right. peace. Right. Does that make sense tonight? Yeah. Huh? So when God calls you to be a blessing to someone, you got to understand, he's calling you to bring peace, Amen. order, Amen. truth. Yeah. Yeah. But let's be transparent. Because oh, they my friend. I yeah. want her to keep talking to me. I don't tell her the truth. Uh -oh. I want her to keep calling me and texting me. Uh -oh. Let's keep it real. 
Huh? That's my baby. I don't want her to not come over and visit me no more. That's my child. I'm afraid she won't come over and speak to me no more because I told her the truth. So I'm, I'm going to tell her that she can do whatever she wants. Say whatever she wants. Be whatever she wants to be outside of the spirit of the Lord. And he understands it. You know, he knows her heart. So now we're in part three tonight. Discipleship being necessary through Christ. Tonight we're going to talk about Gathering blessings while we're discarding burdens. I hope this is going to help somebody tonight. Amen. You know, there was a time where people were really, really excited about Bible study. Yeah. Sunday school. They were excited about learning more about not just God himself, but how God himself wants to interact within themselves. Yeah. Now, we just... We want to run through. We want to swipe right. right? We want to get on. We got stuff to do. Right? We want, but we'll sit on TikTok for an hour and a half, four hours, five hours, Instagram. <laughs> Girl, that's funny. <laughs> Let me send it to five people. <laughs> How many really got some out of Sunday, sir? Don't waste your time. Oh, yeah. Mm. You're on point, Pastor. Mm. What'd you get from it, Pastor? Listen, I, that my time is valuable. Yeah. You know, my time is valuable, and I don't have time for foolishness. You know, I mean, time is winding up. You know, and so every moment is precious. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I tell you, every time I visit my father, I realize just how precious time is. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I just don't, I don't have the time anymore. Let me use you for a second, because you're just in a, you're in a beautiful circle right now. Do you notice that the conversations and meetings with people who make a certain amount of money yes, sir. are different from people who have a lot of money? Absolutely, yeah. The language is different. It's different. And everything is... Honey, mm -hmm. they don't have any time to waste. I listened to millionaires do deals last week. I listened to millionaires talk about a $2 million airplane and what they wanted and what was on there. And I just wrote all these notes. I was a fly on the wall just listening, and I was amazed. I said, "You got, I got to come up. I got to, I got no time to They don't waste. I tell people, in the world, there's two things. People who have a lot of money don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because they're spending time making money. Mm -hmm. People who have a lot of time ain't got a lot of money. You got that? Absolutely. <laughs> I want to meet them. Absolutely. I want to meet them. Amen. No. Huh? My favorite guy, Jerry Jones, Dallas Cup, love him. He ain't got no time. Mm -hmm. If I say, hey, I want to meet you, what do you say? Look, meet me for what? Because mm -hmm. <laughs> no if it ain't bringing no money to me, yeah, you're probably not going to meet. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't saying it's right. I'm just saying it's real. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? You sometimes out there giving your gifts to people who don't appreciate what you're trying to give to them, and you've wasted a day because somebody was over here in the corner who really needed to have your gift, but you didn't have yeah. time. time. Right. Let's talk about it. Second Timothy chapter 2, 15. Let's pull that up. Somebody find that for me. Second Timothy chapter 2, 15. We're talking about gathering blessings, discarding our burdens. Alright? Right? Go ahead. Somebody read it for me. Is it the now understand that she will be saved with child there if they continue in faith? No, 2 Timothy chapter 2, yes. verse 15. Study to show uh -huh. that self approved unto God. God. Unto who? God. Unto God. Your mom. Unto God. God. Your boss on your job. God. Your children at home. God. God. Okay, go ahead. A workman that needed. Not to be ashamed. Okay. Righteousness and dividing in the word of truth. Okay. What does that got to do with gathering your blessings? <laughs> what does the scripture tell you when it talks about gathering your blessings? Let's look at it. That's okay. Hmm? First line tells you, right? How can I gather without knowledge? That's what I was about to say. Tell me, Brother Smith. That you can't, if you can't recognize the blessing when it comes, mm. 
it'll just go right by. So basically what he's saying is if I don't recognize the blessing, how can I operate in it? Yeah. Amen. T, your job. Mm -hmm. Where you where you hang out. <laughs> He get paid to do a lot of nothing, but that ain't the point. <laughs> the point is he got a job. He's employed. <laughs> T is a professional certified surveyor, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. So when you are surveying of the land, how important is it to be accurate and correct? Uh, uh, in the court of law, you have to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, you might have uh, a residence arguing where the proper line is. And, and this stuff can get to the service. It can either fall on the surveyor or the can fall on the one who is encroaching. So you have to be. I, I don't like to say perfect, but you have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. As accurate as possible. And be able to prove it. And be able to prove it. Mm -hmm. have to have proof, yeah. How accurate are you all that you say? Yeah. Prove it. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, we come here and sit down on Sunday morning. Not the time piece. Not the time piece. <laughs> the time piece. How do you prove that you have this relationship? But how do you prove it? And your walk should have what? Study time. How much study time y'all got? Huh? Let's keep it real. How much study time? What does it mean to study? There's a difference between reading something and studying something. Doc, help me, you are a philosopher of college education. Doctorate there. Tell them what study really means, study, please. Uh, is not just reading it, but dissecting it, looking up the words, looking up the meaning, um, taking time to put it into practice, application, going back over it, making sure that you read it from different angles, different perspectives, and talk to people about it. Mm -hmm. So there's different ways that you can study. Um, but it's in depth. Mm -hmm. So it's not just really a, we're not talking about you have three ways that you can see something, right? Mm -hmm. Three ways that you view something. Mm -hmm. One is glance. You can glance at something, right? Mm -hmm. Right. You just kind of look at it, but really don't have an intent to it, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have when you see something. That means you bring it into focus. You're able to acknowledge what it is, and you're able to see where it might be utilized, if at all, in your life. Then you got what was your rank in the military? Sergeant first class. Sergeant first class. When you had to do recon, you were seeking. You ain't seeing, you ain't glancing. You're seeking for the enemy, correct? That means I'm looking at something with an intent and purpose. Are we seeking God? Yeah. Are we seeking the blessings of God? Or are we just glancing over? Am I seeking the prosperous times of my marriage? Or am I just glancing over it? Am I seeking greater in my household? Or am I just, I see it, but hey, you know, I, I'll get to it. I'll see what I can do. Because if I'm not in the spirit of blessing, I'm definitely carrying the spirit of burden. Cannot be both. It's either or, right? Yes. It's either righteousness or wickedness, right? Hard to call, right? Choose ye this day who? No So let's look. Study to show thyself. Why does he say thyself? Oh, I'm responsible. I can't blame my mom. <laughs> you never heard about saying, hey, man, let me tell out to my mama get paid. <laughs> what? Yeah, man, my mama get paid my folks. <laughs> She's like, God, she needs to stop fasting. <laughs> it's true though, Adam. You can't talk about me. I used to be that scotch. What up? I used to tell people, loan me five dollars to my mama see me some money. <laughs> Not till I go get a job. Oh, I pay you my mom. But my mama dropped this dime on me, then I'm gonna take care of you. Whatever time is. The next thing you know, you 40. Still saying. Jesus. Huh? No, no, that's too much. 
When the Lord has told me, if I steady show myself approved, I have a savings of my blessings that I can still help somebody. So the Lord dropped the next one, right? And the next, and the next. But what would God, why would he give me a blessing if not utilizing the ones I have? Mm. Why would he give me more? Why would he put more upon me to bless someone with if I'm not even blessing nobody with what I already have? He said uh, one thing, uh, said the little that I give you, you mm -hmm. won't take care of that. Mm -hmm. Be faithful over a few things, right? Mm -hmm. Now, why you expect for me to give you more? Mm -hmm. So, so if I'm not you faithful, not, if you're not taking care of what he already give you, right. you won't get no more. Right. So why would why am I not faithful on my discipleship? He gave it to you. Yeah. So why am I not faithful over it? Well, the fear of rejection, maybe, when you go to talk to somebody. Rejection of from who? From the person. But God gave it to me. Yeah. Correct. But if you're trying to be a disciple and help them, and they're like, I don't want to hear it. So this is my commission? No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody gets saved, you get a cut from no, what? No, rejection as in, you know, feelings. Like, you know, we don't like to be rejected. I don't know. I'm just saying. We don't like to be rejected. You about say. God. Anything really, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was a, I, I had secrets. Yeah, you did. And uh, <laughs> when nobody listened, <laughs> when nobody listened, and uh, <laughs> I complained to God about it. And what He told me was, "You do what I tell you, and don't worry about it." Right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. right. Just keep on saying that. <laughs> and then I remember one time, can I go there? Yeah. I asked Him. Is that the pond God gave you? <laughs> if you get no fish out of it, <laughs> is that the pond? But he's my pastor. I, 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 I don't know. I can't remember what you told me. I think you scratch your head on that, Rabbi. I think you were correct. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to the area that, that, yeah, they were fish in the pond, but they were not hungry. Okay. <laughs> wow. There you okay. go. Okay. Hey, huh? You were cutting you off. But discipleship means learning. Mm -hmm. First, you got to learn. You got to learn. How can you be faithful if you haven't learned it? If you haven't learned it. Yeah. But once you learn it, yeah. it should turn key. Yeah. Because see, you always be learning. Learning is not a one-time no, deal, no, right, Doc? It's not a one-time deal. Right. But, uh, because Jesus taught his disciples. Yeah. He took them on one by one. Yeah. It was all in there, man. Yeah. But see... And also, we're not, he is holy, he's a spirit. Mm -hmm. We're human. And? And we make mistakes. And? Jesus don't make mistakes. And? and that be uh, forgiven. <laughs> but, Which makes it easier for me to deal with a person because persons make mistakes. Yeah, I love it. Does it make sense? No, yeah. it's only that, and you learn from you. You will learn from you, and you should. You're right. <laughs> you should learn from him. You should learn from you him. Learn. You should. <laughs> So why is we talk we're talking about here standing to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not needed. Now we're talking about needs, right? Necessary. It is not necessary for you to be ashamed. You don't need it, Tonyo. It's okay to be a young man and love God. And have your, 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 your lock dread things going on. Right? You can still look like Julio and be alright. <laughs> right? Still love God. Mommy still got your cornbread rolls, whatever you call them. You call them. And still love God. Right? Amen. Right? Amen. We're not judge people how they look Amen. to say that they're saved. Right? That's right. It is what we're displaying from within that acknowledges how we look right. to the world. Amen? Amen. So, go ahead. Teaching God's word requires a great responsibility. It does. You Amen. don't take it lightly. That's right. And so it's a process. It, yeah, right. It's a process. Everybody can not do teach his word. Yeah. Well, Straight, well in, in in the form of what I get what you say. In the form of title ship, everyone may not have the 
passion. Because mm -hmm. you have to have a passion for certain things. Mm -hmm. You may not have a passion to get up and do what I'm doing here. This mm -hmm. makes a good passion. I get it. That's your gig. Everybody have a gift. Right. But we all have the gift to teach, yeah. if nothing else, by the way you live. Right. Am I wrong? No. Yes, sir. Well, I was going to say, like, we may have the, the gift to teach, but how we teach it is going to be evangelism, mm -hmm. like talking to people. That's a whole nother different problem. <laughs> because I, I'm thinking about, I did this fast going into the new year. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the Holy Spirit was telling me to ask my nail tech if she believed in Jesus. It's mm -hmm. like the hardest thing for me to get out of my mouth. I was like, it won't come out. Oh my God. Like, I, I said everything. And I was like, Lord, please forgive me if I'm not doing your will. Oh my God. But it would not come out. Mm -hmm. But I was like, um, I'm going to church. Because she was like asking me different things. I'm like, I'm going to church for New Year's. Um, New Year's Eve. Um, do you believe Jesus is coming back? But that ain't what, that's not exactly what God told me to say. Mm -hmm. I was like, Ugh, it can't, it just won't come out. And it's, I don't, I don't, mm -hmm. it's the hardest So, and I'm going to leave you with this. Yeah. Because I'm not asking you to go out there and pass out tracks. Right. <laughs> and sell the gospel. Yeah. My God. I ain't asking you to do that. I'm asking you to tell them that it's free, but it comes with a price. Yeah. Here's how. Just build relationships. Right. We got people in our circles, they may not be in our inner circles, but they're within our grasp. We don't even relate to them about the Spirit of God exactly. at, all. Yeah. at all. We talk about everything we talk about, politics, sports, who mama don't like, somebody else mama. All, we do all of that. When it comes to that part, why do we cream? The conversation, you never, God never gives you a window and say, Sis, where you fellowship at? You ain't got to go, hey, you know Jesus was part of your scene? That's a little hard. I mean, that's a little direct, you know, but if I, man, goodness, I've been running people all the time, have one like that. You know, like, I can't put the name face, but hey, Man, I'm glad to get a seat, man. How the family, man? Where, where, where you fellowshipping at, man? Where you, where you been? I ain't seen you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, man, I get a, I, I, Okay, then my woman. Come see me, man. Give me one Thursday. Give, give, give me one second. Let me work with you. Let me help you. Man, they might say, well, okay. They might give me the old, hey, I'll come by there. They may not come. But they won't be able to say, nobody's helping me. Nobody's offering me. Nobody's telling me that I'm necessary. Nobody's telling me that I'm needed. Because I make sure before I leave, they know they're necessary. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But if I leave them hanging out on the pond of they on their way to hell, mm -hmm. that ain't drawing folk no more. I'm just letting you know now. You go out there now telling people, well, you going to hell. <laughs> well, you going to hell. You going to hell. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you the pastor just went off in the church, you going to hell. And he told her, you're going to be the chief musician in hell. Oh, Stop playing. Stop playing. You're going to hell too for playing. Oh, Jesus. He went off. I don't know oh he lost my it. God. That doesn't sound like a blessing to me, right? <laughs> if we're going to make the gospel, if we say the gospel is a blessing, why are we making people feel like it is? God will always give you what to say. Yeah. Always. Uh, I just told you, it doesn't mean it. Doesn't mean it. No. no. But I also say when you get up in the morning, see, I get up with a different spirit. I'm not saying I'm better than nobody else, but I'm different. I wake up saying, Lord, who you got me to honor? I'm all around like a crazy for eyes wide open. Ah, there you go. There you go. Hey. How you doing? Man, good to see you. Where you from, sir? This pastor is this Sunday. Man, I will call him. I'm the police. Call me. I'll talk to myself. I'm already here. But I'm saying, there wasn't, I didn't always work that way, but I'm just saying, that's where I am now because studying is telling me time is winding up. And maybe just maybe we're not making it a major priority to disciple because we don't think we got, we maybe think we got, you know, time. we got time. We don't have well, same way. <coughs> so let's put it this way. In other words, maybe, maybe I'm off base. But the problem is, like Jesus, when he sent the setting out, he said, take no food, take no nothing, but go out. Those that don't open the door, Kick the dust off the shoes. Keep moving. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, like I said, everybody may not be in the spirit of hearing you at the time, and that's yeah, fine. Right. 
And you don't know. It's like he said. It's like God will give you something to say. God will tell you, move on. <laughs> it's okay. You ain't got to sit there and try to over convince them of something they don't. Don't people? I've learned it. People, if they don't want it, you'll know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can tell. You can tell when people want to be talked to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. By the way that yeah. I can go. They're like, if I'm going to do do, I'm doing this. Yeah. And people want to talk to me. I talk to yeah. them. What throw people off deep? Yeah. Sang you go to a job and tell people about the church. They're like, sang y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back there. Yeah. <laughs> she got a mirror to bite me. Teaches at her church. How much cussing she doing back there? <laughs> Every time she comes, she got a lick on her bread. No, I'm sure. <laughs> and, it ain't, and, it ain't, and it ain't the sign you can't drink. She's an adult, right? Yeah. That ain't the point. What you is, the Bible says, give no room to the devil. Right. Yeah. No room. Don't give him no room. Now, what you do in the part of your house is your business, your mad woman, you're grown. But I mean, everybody got to know what I'm doing. That's right. I ain't got to post everything. Oh, okay. Not everything. Teach your ass up. I think it was people reading my people don't really show the discipleship like they're in the work setting because they don't want to, they want to be in the in crowd. Because everybody going to the left, you don't want to, it's like you're going to the right or you can't be better than everybody else. You know, you have those different labels on you. So you try to fit in, you go with the stuff you go with. Just so you don't drop in the Say again, Mom. No. You leave a lot of people just confused. Yeah. Because I had a conversation with a group of ladies yesterday, and they was like, "Oh, we gonna do this black girl magic." And I was like, "No." I said, "There's school room now. What is it?" There's black girl magic. I don't know. I don't even know what it is, but I okay. just know that somebody knows see me at the class. She like sprinkle. She did like the sprinkle. Okay. She said black girl magic, and I was like, "There's two words that I wouldn't put together in that sentence: right. black and magic." Magic. Sound right. like witchcraft to me. So in um, you Bible study, I brought this example up. Right. And I was like, you have to be careful about the words. And see, even if you, I knew what she was getting at, but I was like, why couldn't you say black excellence? Why couldn't you say something that's more yeah. uplifting? Because when you start talking about black magic, mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing. Witchcraft. Yeah. Yeah. Get that lane? Don't do no black magic here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my first point, we're talking about what we learned we can teach. What we learn, we can teach. Amen? Amen? Yes. And it doesn't always have to be in this, this format, in this setting, right? Yeah. What we learn, right? We can teach. So when you look at that, I put out, in order to do it effectively though, experience, exposure, expectation. Experience. It is very, it's very um, understanding if I learn something I've been, have an experience in it, that I'm able to teach it. Now, that don't mean I gotta smoke crack teach about credit and loot. Oh right? <laughs> I got family members who, who, who taught me through their lifestyle that that, that problem is not on my list of things to do. Right? Because some people say, well, you don't know what somebody goes. Well, you're right. I don't know. And I don't want to experience it to know. I'll let you tell me, but I don't have to do it in order to say I can teach it. Does that make sense? But I can tell you about praise because I experience it. I can tell you about worship because I experience it. Prayer because I experience it. So once again, if you struggle with praying, it's because you don't experience it. So if you don't plan to experience it, pay $300 to go across town and learn how to be a prayer warrior. What? Okay. Yes. 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 Yes.
If I don't have a desire to do it, why would God give a decision for me to have it? Exposure. Every experience is an exposure. Later, if you expose yourself to kids who skip class, sooner or later, I don't know now. Mama always knows, baby. <laughs> Probably because Mama skipped class too <laughs> and got caught up. But anyway, I'm saying when you think about your exposures, then there's a the most important expectation. Why should we have an expectation of receiving blessings? Because it's the promise of God. The promise of God. So how can I say I expect the promise of God and his blessings and not feel like he's going to discard my burdens? <coughs> Why would God bless me and let me keep my job? Well, right. he, he, he instructed you to discard your burdens. Oh, yes. Did, yes. Didn't he? He said, come. Come to the altar and lay your burdens. Yes. Right? So why are we in, what, what, what's, what's hold up? <laughs> what's got us stuck in the chair? Say again, Doc. Comfortable with what? Your burden. With your burden. Oh, uh -oh watch out, that. You done set up on <laughs> Why are we comfortable with our burdens? Because we feel safe. I stay angry. I like hollering and slamming doors uh -oh. because it works for my blood pressure. Uh -oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, it worked for me. Yeah. Oh, man. And it gets you attached from. Now, you know there's an attention spirit. There is. You do it exists, right? It desires to be seen and heard. And when it's not seen and heard, it does what it needs to do to be Okay, this will make sense on the way home. Oh, God. I, that explains a lot. Right? So, as believers, you have to be very careful to not be overextending your blessings into your burden view. Look what he said. Experience, exposure, expectation. What we learn, we can teach. We can teach others how to live in their burdens just by living in ours. And you don't think you got to answer to God for that one day? And that don't get your attention. I don't know what. That's what he's going to come to you about, Russ Smith. Not how many houses and cars you had, how much money you had in the bank, how many jobs. That's nice. Sound good on paper. He gonna say, look, but them three people I asked you to talk to when they were pouring their heart out of you and you was trying to get cross town. When you was in here speaking in tongues, but out there cussing like a saint. No, Jesus. Coming in a Honda on that one, huh? Those are the burdens, guys. I don't know about you. I, I, I like feeling unweighted. Mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm on my own playing field. Pray for me. I got issues. When I come here, I don't feel burdened. Amen. Thank God. In the sense of it, right? Now, do I sometimes? Oh, God. Here we go. Right, here we go. No, here we go. It comes, but it don't stay. And that's what I want you to get to understand. That the enemy will always have a presence, but we don't have to give it no power. Yes. Amen. Huh? Amen. I heard what the doctor said. Yeah, it, it is overwhelming me in my mind for the moment, but I refuse to let it kill Amen. my whole day. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. And I got to start talking to me about as if I care about me. Amen. Sometimes we don't do that, guys. We talk at ourselves, not to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then when we do talk to ourselves, it probably ain't good. Amen? Amen. Let's go to our second scripture. Galatians 6 and 9. These are familiar texts, right? You guys have heard these scriptures before. We're talking about being necessary in Christ. We're talking about gathering our blessings while we're discarding our burdens. Number two. Galatians 6 and 9. Let's read that. What does it say? And let us not be weary mm. and well doing. What kind of doing? Well, well, okay. Weird. And what else? In due season. When? Due season. Okay. What's going to happen? We shall reap if 
Till we preach not. Oh. What does it got to do with gathering a blessing? Discarding a burden? Uh huh. Let's talk about it. I give you the I give you the, te the, the the point. What we do, we can share. What we do, we can share. Amen. We're talking about quantity. We're talking about quality. And we're talking about qualify. Let's look at those power words into that. Doc, about to jump out of the seat back there. Come on. <laughs> Get into the doc. Experience. Mm -hmm. In due season. Because it may not be why you wanted to come. But you have experience. You have a quantity of situations that you can tell somebody about. Um, you're qualified because of that. And then the quality, if you stuck with God the whole time, then he's going to allow you to be able to share that with somebody. What we do, we can share. Mm -hmm. What are we doing, God? Isn't that important? What we do should matter, shouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it? Why do we stumble and fumble with the things of life that some of us should have graduated by now? Because it's just a new, it's just a new level of a new devil waiting on us. So we might as well get on out of this level so we can move on to the next one, but I'll be stronger and wiser than I was in that last one. Because until he come get me, I'm still got to fight the fight. Amen. But what do you do, Gracie? You will fight to the battle. What do you do? But well, ain't no more fighting. <laughs> what do you do? You just say, I, I, I can't do this no more. Mm. What'd she say? We couldn't hear. She said she gotta lay a burden down. That's right. Burden down. <laughs> <laughs> Check your inner circle. Why is it important to have Check this out. Quantity, quality, and qualified people around you. Thank Jesus you. Christ. Mm -hmm. Can't give um, weak people strong things. Can't give weak people by strong things. And huh? after you said, hang around five millionaires, you'll be the sick. You'll be the sick. Hang around five broke people. You're you definitely going to be the sick. I heard what you said. Huh? Uh -huh. If I hang around five people who do not study the word of God, why am I wondering why I'm scratching my head and I can't figure out what's in the book? Mm -hmm. They don't encourage me. They don't embellish me. They don't edify me into studying the word. They don't remind me. That's like people say, I'm going to go work out, girl. Well, don't none of your friends work out. So why are you taking them to the gym with you? I don't none of y'all work out. Everybody got a cup. That goes back to the draining. Oh, go back to the what? Drain. The draining. Because what I told you your gift does. Your gift does a couple things, right? Your gift. Y'all check this out now. It either draws and drains. And sometimes it'll do both. So now remember your draws is your blessing. Your dream is your burden. Does that make sense today? Yes, sir. I don't know about you, but I like the way I'm living right now. I, I'll be honest with you. God is moving, boy. He's taking care of me big time. And I ain't trying to say I'm better than nobody else. I'm just, I'm just in a different place. And I refuse to water it down because it makes you feel bad. Okay, don't do it. Get there. Amen? <laughs> Fix it. We're talking about it. Fix it. You want greater than God? Get what God is at so the greater can... This makes sense to somebody. We have got to understand this walk with Christ requires our participation. This coming and going as I please and dealing with the Bible when I feel like it. and You know, I'll pray when it uh, seats me and it suits me. And I... Guys, you're just, you're just wasting time. And I can't say this enough before you know it. Sitting over there in the mother's boy. 
Yeah, you said Ain't that little young coke bottle shaped lady you was? Huh? Right. Coke bottle. You know, did it though, did it, did it. But it went in the end because she's a... Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep being what you can. That's it. It don't change. But I don't know about you. I just believe that what God has in store for me, I want greater things in life. And anybody that's around me, I want you to have greater. And I mean, and please don't get this wrong when I say this. I don't do well with mediocre. I just don't. If you're going to be around me, I'm going to push you. I'm going to give you your hands up. I'm going to get on your nerves. I'm going to drive you nuts. And I'm going to say, this man, I don't know who you think I am, but that ain't what I do. That'll work for me. And that's why I said, we love you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody going to run y'all. <laughs> you can come and do anything you need. You just can't do what you want. Okay. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I need the Lord. How about us? Anybody else that I need the Lord? All right. Y'all real quiet. I guess y'all process. What we do, we can share. What we do, we can share in quantity, in quality, and by qualifying. What makes us qualified to share our gifts? You talk about discipleship. Have we really, really looked at that? What qualifies us? Some would say it's already done. Right? The Lord already did it for us. Did he not? Yes. So you don't have to do anything overboard to make it sound like the one for you, Jesus went ahead. Okay. Yes and no. <laughs> Jesus did what he did in the pardon of knowing that he was going to make you a great lady of God one day. Yes. That's the key. Receiving it. I tell you all the time, the enemy is not afraid that you believe in God. That don't shake him. When he believes that you believe that God believes in you, that's when he gets a little shook around the boots. Because then that means you're going to do something. Hmm? You're going to wake up in the morning and say, I got young people my age I need to be reaching out to saying, hey man, God won't wait with you because he's doing it on me right now. Make sense? Okay. So let's look at our last scripture. We'll get y'all out of here. Luke 1 and 41. So we, what we do, we can share. Right? What we learn, we can teach. What we do, we can share. Right? Mm -hmm. Last scripture. What is that? Luke. Old Testament, New Testament. New Testament. Written by who? Luke. What does it say? It came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the situation of Mary, mm -hmm. she baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Pastor's got a new movie coming out. He wants y'all to know. <laughs> Marvin All, sorry. Pastor Marvin All. Y'all know him, don't ya? Meaning, when it says the baby leaped in her womb, do they mean it started moving? Yeah. I don't know this. Let's read it again. Let's look at it again. Read it again. What's it say? It came about that when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. So let me help you. Have you not ever felt joyous when somebody comes and tells you about something that's going on with them? Not you. Yes. But you've got this overwhelming feeling inside of you? The baby was already in there. The baby was in the womb. Okay. The baby was John the Baptist. Okay. Okay. It was her cousin. Okay. 
John the Baptist was the baby. She felt, okay. Yeah. 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 Well, babies move all the time, but, but you got to go past the literal part. Okay. Don't babies move? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> People kick, the kick, move, whatever. What she was saying was the spirit of the Holy yes. Ghost was working yes. within her yes. and the baby yes. at the same time. That's wonderful. Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was the blessing. And whatever ill feeling she had about whether her pregnancy or what was going on, well, that, it was discarding her burdens at the same time. Are we listening tonight? When God begins to bless you guys, he's getting rid of what's wrong with you at the same time. Thank you for it. I'm quiet on that one. I'm going to bring it out of this room. Huh? When God blesses you at the same time, he's taking the burden out of you. But see, you can't get there sometimes Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. You got to come get this here. So when you see, why she running around like a chicken with her head cut off here on Sunday morning? I'll take all that. You don't know what I know. <laughs> Amen. 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 And I begin to receive it and I begin to feel that thing inside of me. The spirit of God working inside of me is leaping in me, causing me to make movements that I wouldn't have made. Look at it. He said, and when Elizabeth heard, not saw, heard, heard, heard. be not yes hearers, but what? Jesus. She heard and she had to do something. Ooh, you better say something. <laughs> I hear you. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, I hear something, I ought to do something. Every time I go, can I be transparent? Yeah. I'm sorry, I got issues. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting there. Your I'm watching that football game Monday night. <laughs> and I'm watching my boy Dak Prescott throw them church down, right. going after the other, now for the other. Every face, I'm leaping up inside. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, I'm sitting there. And all I had to hear was the man say, Touchdown! <laughs> I ain't had to see it pass. All I had to do was go, man, catch it. Huh? How many heard the cry of their first baby when he was born? Did it not leap a big Oh y'all not catch it now? Huh? Did it not feel good to hear your baby cry? Yes. So what am I saying? Some of us having some stillborn babies. Yeah. Yeah. We're having babies, but they're not producing. So now instead of having glee and joy, we have misery and pain. Because it's not the pregnancy. That's the problem. It's what's being done in the pregnancy. And God is dealing with you. Let him deal with you. It's okay to lose the things that you held on for far too long that you call a safe place. We call it pain according to the Bible. When you let go of your pain, then you can find your purpose. Does that make sense? And then you begin to see the blessing through your pain. And you watch your burden get up and walk right out the door. Just like this right here. Or do you desire that? When it starts leaving, you go, I love you so. I want you to know. I, I need your love. I need you to walk out the door. Please don't go, buddies. Don't go. All right. Yes, sir. Y'all like y'all here. Y'all ain't never been to a club. Just jump there. Right. So our last point is saying, we talked about gathering blessings, discarding burdens. What we learn, we can teach, right? Experience, exposure, and expectation, right? What we do, we can share. Quantity, quality, qualify, right? The last one is, what we believe, we can trust. Amen? Prepare. Produce praise. How are you a person that says you have the blessings of the Lord and it does not prepare you to produce a praise? Ain't possible. 
Huh? Why would the man say it just like fire? Huh? Some of y'all need to check your furnaces. Your pilot light out. <laughs> Amen. I come here on Sunday morning, I want to hear it all. You know what I tell them? What I tell them back there? Who, who, what I say, Tisha? I say, give me what he paid for. <laughs> Don't you go by there and say, oh, the Lord is my shepherd. No. And I sure not want. <laughs> I want that. I want the best of what you got. Huh? Get up there and preach. <laughs> and I think Jesus and the Lord want you to know how, how important you are. And you just love God. And God loves you. What? Can't hear. Yeah, Say it fast. Yeah. got the styles. But even in that, I should be able to say, man, that man love God. Huh? Man, God use it up. Okay. That Does that make sense? I'm not saying to be a Murrayite. That's not what I'm asking. Okay, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is you better know that we have a house of God that wants to hear the unadulterated word of God coming from the book. Not how much you can sit there and run around in circles and say things. Amen. Amen? Amen. We want to be taught. We want to be learned. We want to be exalted of knowing God wants to use us not just today but any day that we wake up. Amen? That's a blessing. Amen. That don't get rid of nobody, burden. Yeah. If you woke up, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if I woke up, I know one thing I'm going to do when I get up. I'm getting rid of some burdens. Amen. How about that? Let's work on that then. All right. If you're so hindered. <laughs> right? You're so shot up, caught, caught up, can't get free. Just work on getting out of your burden so you can have one praise. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Because somebody is sitting in the corner watching you Waiting on your praise so they can, I know it ain't right, but it's real. Yeah. People follow people. I know walk by faith, not by sight, but I'm trying to tell you guys, when you decide to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as part of your sin, you become a spiritual marketing part of what he wants done. And you can't just say, well, I'm going to just do me. Wrong. <laughs> then you don't need Jesus. You got to wake up saying, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do, who you want me to meet. But when I get up and I walk around here and I'm and I'm going to the grocery store and I'm picking up the cantaloupes and I'm I'm running my hands across the tomatoes and I'm grabbing me a bag of tea. Send somebody by. Because if that's the case, I could just have Walmart drop it off. I didn't go there just to get fruit and vegetables, Drina. I came there to be used by God. Amen. So let's get up. Let's get busy. Amen. Amen. This is God. We got 24 months. That's right. I'm trying to get y'all. I'm trying to get y'all at a certain level. It's gonna go fast. It's gonna be real fast. We we have got to get ready for the great migration. Because where we're going is. Many times the size of what we're going, we're going to need every single hand on board. Because you all have experiences, exposures, and expectations God wants to use. And it's not going to just be a handful of folks saying, oh, I'll see you. I need everybody. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anyone before we close tonight? Gathering our blessings, discarding our burdens. First, you must what? What we learn is what? What we can teach. Experience. Exposure, expectation. Point two, what we do, we can share. Quantity, quality is qualified. Point three, what we believe, we can trust. When Elizabeth believed it, she trusted it. And it produced a praise. Because she was already prepared before she walked in the door. What are you preparing, brothers and sisters? Another argument? You look at sometimes, look, I just can't argue today. No. You win. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking to nobody tonight. Huh? Oh, y'all got perfect. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I just today I'm just not going to do it. I'm going to prepare, produce, or praise. Sometimes me and my wife be on the phone. She think I'd be going left. She be talking. We be just we just general conversation. She's talking about stuff, and I was just like, I love the Lord. And I'm she like, wait, wait. How did this come up? I don't know. It just comes out. We'll be talking about something we got to do. Thank you, Lord. She's like, dude, over here, come back. Thank you, Lord. Right? Keep your mind on Jesus. That way he'll limit that red little fire thing in your mouth that continues to get you in trouble. Huh? Yeah, because if you're singing, you can't argue back. <laughs> He said, life and death is in the power of what? The mind? The heart? Then why we won't be quiet? <laughs> Y'all real quiet tonight. Somebody said, you talk about me. I ain't talking about me. I can't be with confidence. I ain't talking about me. Dude, you know what? Problems. Everybody got problems. Stop it. Amen? How many believe they heard from the Lord tonight? Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Please let's prepare for our giving tonight. Listen, um, fifth Sunday, fifth Sunday, we have a 4 p.m. service. 4 p.m. service, fifth Sunday. This is our youth Sunday, this Sunday. Please come and support our youth. Amen? Amen. 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 As they're going to be doing what God has given them to do. All right? Make sure that your hearts and minds are in the preparation of that. Um, fifth Sunday, 4 o'clock service, there will be food in between services. Yes, sir. Amen. At a nominal price, I'm being told. Yes, sir. You, no different than what you get going to Corral. Amen. With the best, better flavor. <laughs> They're not scared of salt and pepper over here. Amen. Not too much salt, but enough to say you can taste. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. Thank you, thank you. Next month, every Sunday will be First Family Appreciation. Those who can and will, please come support the First Family and we'll be honored the next four Sundays in February. Amen. Amen. Whatever you guys have planned, we, we are just already saying thank you for being a part of whatever God has allowed you all to do. Amen. 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 If you're not sure what to do for First Family Appreciation, please see myself. <laughs> Direct you in that path. Amen. What we're gonna do is gonna be. Everybody needs to qualify. We can do some praise. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother McCullough is much better. Yeah. All right. I did call a few times. Okay. I called a few times. So. I think the last time I called, y'all was on the way to tell us. So um, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this night. We thank you for the spirit of who you are. We thank you that this word was rightly divided, God, in a way that we can be able to say that we understand your work, your will, your way. Father God, we ask that you will bless this offering and our keep of it towards your great glory, God. So in the grace of our God, the love of Jesus Christ, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, and rest from the Lord henceforth now and forevermore. As we walk by faith, never by our own sight. Give me the glory, the honor, the thanks, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. On behalf of myself, Mary, First Lady Tamika Murray, Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. Well, all you need is a